Hello. Um, how many folks are familiar with the Cloud Events Project? Oh, it's nice to see a few more hands coming up every year. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, Cloud Events is a CNCF project to standardize asynchronous messaging. So when you send something and then you just forget about it and you, you assume the next person's got it, um, you can use Kafka for that. You can use RabbitMQ and so forth. Cloud Events gives you a standard way to package that up, kind of like HTTP does for all the requests that we send over gRPC or GraphQL or OpenAPI or stuff like that. Cloud Events aims to be in the same space and it gives you a bunch of libraries for handling that, but also a bunch of, tr of transformations into transports like Kafka and RabbitMQ and all those other things you might use for sending stuff. So that's great. Where would I use this? And I'm going to give you three patterns because it's a lightning talk. And so three is a nice number for remembering things. And it fits into my time slot. Um, the first case is event distribution. So sometimes something happens and you want lots of your software to know about it, but you don't want to really tightly couple things together. So in this case, Stacklock uses Keycloak, which is an identity provider um, to create create identities that people can use across our different products. And sometimes, sad to admit it, people say, hey, you know what, I want to delete my account and I want to go away. And then um, GDPR, for those of you who've heard about it, says we have to delete all that stuff. But we don't want to teach Keycloak about all the different services we have. So that's where event distribution comes in. We can publish an event that says, hey, Mike, this account was deleted, you know, this is the subject, the user that got deleted, you need to go clean up all your stuff. This is when it happened. Um, this is the last time that you can do a cleanup. So if you want to hold on to data for a few days in case they say they come back and they're like, oh, actually, that was a huge mistake. Please take me back. We can be like, hey, we turned on your data again. Um, so event distribution is that first example. Um, another common case I've heard for this is, again, you got your customer information system, and you don't want that to you don't want to build loops in your systems. So saying, hey, I put out an event, and I don't know who gets it, is a great way of avoiding those loops where it's like, oh, I depend on the CRM system because sometimes customers need to change their address, and then um, I need to know about that. But I also call the CRM system, so we call each other. And that's the kind of graph that makes system architects sad. Um, so. Another case that we are using cloud events for is work queues. So um, I gave a longer talk on this earlier uh, with a lot more details about how we actually manage this stuff. But basically, this is your to-do list for the future. Someone you know, comes and says, hey, please update this thing. And you're like, oh, that's a lot of work. So you just jot something down. And you're like, OK, I'll take care of that later. That's a problem for future me. Um, and you can do that any way you want. But there's some nice stuff about using cloud events for that. You can write a log of them, and then when you're testing, you can replay that log. They've got stuff like timestamps in there, so you can say, like, how long ago was I supposed to do this? How long ago was I supposed to take out the garbage? Is this note from three weeks ago? Has my garbage been sitting for three weeks? That would be bad. And your monitoring systems can pick that up and be like, hey, garbage is not going out. You got a problem. Um, so cloud events are also great as a format for sticking stuff in your work queues. And the last pattern is uh, a little bit similar, but this is after you've actually done it. So the garbage is out, that's great. But if you keep those sticky notes around, those, hey, I need to take out the garbage notes, you can keep those as a record of this is the stuff I did, and you can show it to somebody later who is like, show me that you've been taking out the garbage weekly, and you're like, here's my sticky notes, and here's when I delivered them. And you can store that as an audit log, and you can actually present that like, for example, Cloud Events describes, here's how you show a collection of Cloud Events over HTTP. And you can say, here's a whole list of the Cloud Events that I did for, on your behalf. Um, you can go digest it, and you can throw it into some other system, and you can react to it further. And again, it's asynchronous. I don't need to know. Maybe you'll show up in two years and be like, hey, what was this event? And we can talk about it. Or maybe I've forgotten, and then you'll have the only record. It's life. Um, so if you're going to make these events useful, uh, these are just a couple of tips, you know, document what these things look like. Cloud events is like HTTP. Uh, HTTP is real handy, but if you don't have definitions for all those headers, 
and nobody can really agree. So write down, like, what does the source mean in your case? What does the subject mean? What's your custom metadata? What's your schema and content type? And what, what does the payload fields look like? Um, and with that, happy eventing. <laughs>